What's up guys? In today's discussion, I want to be talking about the ego and the problems that arise from having an inflated ego. But before I dive into that, I want to share with you guys this poem. This poem I read in a high school and fell in love with. And now I'm not even into poetry, but this one resonated with me and is relevant for the discussion. So this is a segment from it. And it goes, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing besides remains around the decay of that colossal wreck. Boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Now, for those of you that don't know what that poem is about, it's basically about this dictator or this king, this tyrant, Ozymandias, who had this huge monument erected up, presumably in a city, right? And on the pedestal, there was an inscription, a challenge to the gods, right? Where Ozymandias was telling them that he's the king of kings and that they should fear him. But this statue, at the point which the poem is being read, is destroyed, shattered in thousands of pieces across the desert sand. The irony is, the only thing that's left is that inscription. The one that says, King of Kings, look on my works in despair. Now, of course, this poem is a cautionary tale. It's a warning. A warning about the problems that arise from having too much hubris. From having an ego that's too big. Now the Greeks used to say hubris leads to nemesis. Which basically means that people that have an inflated ego are going to meet their downfall eventually. And that's exactly what this story symbolizes. And it's so true. If you look at history. If you look at your own life experience. You often find that there's people with an inflated ego. There's people that were too arrogant never make it far there's always something that gets them in the end which leads us to our discussion today about the ego and the importance of keeping your ego in check now your ego to kind of try explain it real quick give you the 11 second elevator pitch it's basically your idea of yourself right it's like your kind of like your self-concept of who you think you are your name, uh, you know, stuff that you associate with yourself. So my ego would be Isaac, you know, a YouTuber, a mechanical engineering student, you know, six for one, athletic, bodybuilding, black, you know, all these things you kind of associate with yourself. However, the problem with having an inflated ego, right, and um, is basically that you start thinking that this idea, this concept of yourself, is more important than other concepts of other people, other people's egos, other concepts of other selves. You start thinking that you are better, that there's something intrinsically superior about yourself. And this can be disastrous. Just like what happened to Ozymandias. He thought he was better than other people. His megalomania led to his downfall which are extreme cases, megalomania, hubris, extreme cases of ego that's let loose. So ego in everyday life, I'm sure you've had arguments with people. And if you're a normal person, whenever you have an argument with someone, it's usually one-sided. You're usually thinking about your opinion, your voice, your idea. You're not, you're not even listening to the other person. You're, you're just angry. You can't resonate with them. Because you are operating from your ego, right? Now, you might say that you were right in the argument. That's why you have an argument, right? You were right. The other person was wrong. And you're trying to prove that they were wrong. But what you have to understand is you are blinded by ego a lot of the time. And the problem with having a big ego is that it blinds you to your own downfalls. People with big egos are less willing to learn new things, less willing to see where they're fucked up in a just course. So ultimately, you pay the price. So what I challenge people on this channel to do is to always check their egos. 
always always check their egos try and see if there's moments when they're not being fair to other people try and see if there's moments where you are trying to make yourself more grandiose than what you are and if you can do this if you can become more aware more conscious of these moments you will be improving you are going to make it to places that other people are not going to make it because you can adjust course you can learn from your mistakes you can take creative criticism constructive criticism and move on it's crucial it's so crucial or you could be like the average person who is blinded by ego, who doesn't even know what the concept of ego is. They're so saturated by ego that they don't know anything else. Now, of course, you could say that you can't blame these people, right? It's human nature. It's natural, which is true, because 95% of the population is probably run by ego because they don't know any better. They were educated into ego, right? Conditioned into ego. It's all they know. You grow up and you have this first person view of life just seeing things through your own eyes so it's very difficult to ever think about seeing things from someone else's point of view you you grow up so intimately with yourself with your idea of you that you start to believe that you're more important that your decisions your um, choices are more important than other people's it's normal it's natural it doesn't mean it's right if you want to transcend to higher levels right if you want to leave this lower level paradigm of just being stuck in ego, you need to develop this thing called meta-awareness. Meta-awareness is basically being able to kind of sort of project yourself out of yourself. See yourself as if you are a bystander, as if you are at a different vantage point, and then watch your actions from that point, not blinded, not tainted by ego. And then you make your decisions based off those objective views and those decisions, those decisions are going to serve you better than any decision that's tainted by ego ever will. So how can we develop this meta-awareness? Isaac, you're throwing all these fancy words. What the hell are you talking about? What can we do to develop this? You're saying that the ego is bad. How can we get better? It's simple. It always goes back down to the basics of things I preach over and over again, multiple times throughout the years. Meditation. Meditation helps you remove your ego. It helps you see when your ego is getting too inflated so that you don't have to end up like Ozymandias. And it does that by forcing you to analyze it, by forcing you to sit still and just observe your thoughts, to observe the patterns that go through your mind, the ideas to understand that you are not your thoughts you are not this idea that you've believed for so long this idea that you've constructed over the years you're not that because you're able to see it from a different vantage point how can you be that thing that you're able to see how can you be this idea that you're thinking of if you're able to observe the thoughts from somewhere else that is not interesting and of course i'm getting way out of scope of this video now talking about thoughts and observing them it's the subject of another video but i just want to leave you guys with that just try be more aware of your ego try see things from other vantage points and trust me you'll make better decisions in life and you'll get further ahead so i'll be making more videos on this topic of course um but yeah if you have something to say post it down in the comment section and i would love to have a discussion with you until next time guys peace I know what you're thinking. That's a damn good ant screen. And you're right. And also, uh, if you subscribe to the videos, make sure to click post notifications so that you can see more of these ant screens in your news feed because YouTube's not going to show them any other way. Yeah, thanks.